Hello everyone, it's Emma and welcome back to my channel. Today, we're diving into green energy. We're gonna bust some myths around it because I've been hearing a lot about that recently. And also leave other myths that you've heard about green energy down below. Maybe we can make this a part two about debunking myths around green energy. So green energy has become quite the buzz lately, especially with the climate crisis and everyone trying to be net zero by 2050. And there are always haters to everything when it comes to the climate crisis because people see, people hear climate change and think everything related to climate change is bad, it's all political. Before we jump in, please know that I'm not anti renewable energy. I think renewables are great. I think using anything but oil and coal is amazing. And there are truly some downsides to green energy, but there's going to be downsides to anything. There's no perfect solution to the climate crisis. There's no, nothing exists in this universe, in this world at least, that is perfect. But the point is, is that we're trying to be better. So I know some people are probably watching this that are anti-green energy. Just know while green energy is not perfect, it is still better than coal and oil. Anyway, let's go ahead and jump in. First, let's talk about wildlife and conservation. This is probably the biggest issue I personally had with green energy. I still have it a little bit, and that's because renewables do pose some threats to wildlife. Hydroelectric dams can buck the migration patterns of fish, solar panels take up huge amounts of space, and wind turbines have the potential to cause collisions with birds. Though, a lot of efforts have been made in recent times trying to mitigate these risks. Specifically with wind turbines, they are, they obviously wouldn't put them in the most windy areas, but now they're starting to look at the migration patterns of birds and see if flocks of birds typically fly fly in those areas. And then same with solar panels, they're trying not to take up so much land with them. It does make more sense to just slap solar panels on every roof of every building we've already built instead of creating a solar field somewhere out in nature. But things are being taken to make better action. A common argument against solar specifically is that it takes up a lot of land. And you know what? That's true. It is estimated that by 2035 in the US alone, about 50 million acres of land will be developed into green energy production. Though, let's keep things in perspective. How much land does oil take up? In 2018 alone, 26 million million federal acres were leased to oil and gas developers. So half the amount of total land used for renewable energy was used in 2018 alone by oil. So while renewables do take up a lot of land, so does oil production. Not to mention, drilling for oil actually poses more threats to wildlife. Sure, birds have the chance of being in a collision with a wind turbine, but an oil spill, that's like instant death for animals. And of course, there's also fracking incidents and the CO2 that's being put into the air and causing the sixth mass extinction. That sounds like quite the negative impact on wildlife to me. Chris Mormon, a professional and coordinator at the Fisheries, Wildlife, and Conservation Biology Program at North Carolina State, agrees that green energy poses a lot of threats to modern conservation, but that doesn't mean that we shouldn't still opt for green energy. Because like I already said, oil and coal also pose a big threat to conservation. He also notes that they're working harder to put more regulations in place to protect these animals in these habitats. This is something that we have learned as renewables become more popular. Next, let's talk about air pollution. I feel like this is a very common argument I hear, and that is wind turbines take too much energy and they're not going to make up for it in their lifetime. That is actually false. And the thing is, wind turbines and solar panels are so dirty to create right now because we're having to rely on oil and coal to create them. Eventually, if we start to rely more on wind and solar, we can use wind energy to create more wind energy. We can use solar energy to create more solar panels. But right now, we are reliant on coal and oil to make these products, which makes the process so dirty. But it is estimated that it takes about 200 kilowatt hours to produce one 100 watt solar panel. But according to this estimate, one solar panel will create one kilowatt hour of energy per day, meaning 365 kilowatt hours in a year. That means in about two thirds of the year, the solar panel will already have created more energy than it took to create it. But what about wind turbines? People think these are especially dirty. And I definitely see where they're coming from. It takes a lot of energy to create something that big and a lot of energy to transport something that big. A wind turbine, like one blade, takes up an entire truck. So that's at least three trucks just for the blades, not to mention the entire tower. It probably takes anywhere from three to 10 semi trucks to transport one wind turbine. But again, the less and less that we rely on fossil fuels to run our vehicles, the less impact this will have on the planet. It is estimated though that offshore wind turbines can pay for their energy debt and be carbon negative in five to 12 months, while onshore wind turbines can be carbon negative in two to 24 months. So it is a little bit longer than solar panels, but still two years or less to become carbon negative, I think that's pretty good. And at least with renewables, there's a chance to be clean. With oil and coal, there's no chance for that to be clean. So I don't really see this argument. I don't, I don't see how this is a good argument. But what about the physical pollution? What do we do with those solar panels and those wind turbines when they're no longer being able to be used? I definitely get the concern, but at the same time, we're not recycling oil rigs. We're not recycling gas stations and nobody seems to care about that. That being said, older wind turbines are not recyclable and they are huge. So they do take up a ton of landfill space, very bad. People saw this as a bad thing and they're starting to create recyclable wind turbines. It's similar to plastic. A plastic water bottle is not going 
going to be turned into a new plastic water bottle. It's going to be downcycled. Same with wind turbines. Instead of being turned into a new wind turbine, it's going to be turned into something like parts for cars or so forth. The downside though, <laughs> there's no mandating to recycle these. This goes for everything we create though. There is no mandatory recycling for soda cans, for water bottles, for phones, and so forth. So I think this is something that we still need to work on is mandating recycling for everything, but especially with things like wind turbines because those things are huge and we do not have infinite landfill space. And the same goes for plastic because plastic, uh, because recycling is not mandatory for either plastic or wind turbines, it's often cheaper to make turbines from scratch than to recycle them. It all comes down to the money, which is unfortunate, which means we need more funding for our recycling programs instead of funding for new oil extraction. Solar panels, on the other hand, are very easy to recycle. They're made from glass, metal, and electronic components that can easily be turned back into new solar panels or new electronic devices. Not only are they recyclable, it is a super valuable recycling system. It is estimated to be worth around $450 million. This also makes solar panels even more eco-friendly because recycling the old ones takes a lot less energy than mining for new materials. Now let's move on to nuclear waste. This one I still have issues with, but yet it's still cleaner than coal and oil. I think it's really funny though that people have issues with solar and wind, but no one seems to have an issue with nuclear energy. I don't know. It just, it just seems weird to me. To me, nuclear energy poses many more threats than solar and wind. So nuclear is considered green energy, considered clean energy because it burns clean. When nuclear energy burns, there's no no emissions or very, very few. But like with coal and oil, nuclear waste is also not a renewable resource. Technically it is over like probably millions of years, just like oil is, but at the rate that we're extracting it, we're gonna run out. And then the biggest issue is obviously the nuclear waste that comes with nuclear energy. The waste can remain harmful for humans and wildlife and plants for thousands of years. It requires very strict handling, storage, and proper disposal methods. When we're thinking of nuclear energy, nuclear waste, we're not quite seeing the fallout that happened at Chernobyl or Fukushima or something like that. It is definitely less potent once it has been properly used, but it is still toxic and still radioactive. So when it comes to storage of this material, it can't just be buried. A popular example of dry storage for nuclear waste, which is basically a concrete and steel barrier that tightly seals nuclear waste. It is then oftentimes buried to, pr to preserve the um, steel and concrete shell from erosion. So again, while it is not perfect, at least it burns clean. And as long as it's stored properly and it doesn't get eroded, there won't be any environmental damage. This next argument is probably the most common I see against green energy. You probably know where this is going and that is people are gonna lose their jobs in coal and oil. That is 100% true, but they're gonna be hired right back into the energy sector. But instead of mining coal, extracting oil, they're instead going to be manufacturing green energy. It's also not an overnight change. Like if we wanted to switch to green energy, which we are trying to in the next 38, 28 years, it's not gonna happen overnight. People, you know, millions of people aren't going to lose their job right now. It's going to be maybe a few people every year, but at the same time, they're going to be transitioning those jobs into green energy jobs. We are still very much a society reliant on coal and oil. So for right now, those jobs are safe. In 2019, 11.5 million jobs were created in the green energy space. As jobs in coal and oil may decrease over the years, the amount of jobs in the green energy space will increase. Not to mention wages for green energy jobs typically pay better. They are around two to $10 more per hour, which is a 25% increase over the median income. While jobs in the coal and oil industry are over 40% of the median income, it does seem like you're being paid more. The pay that you're being paid when you're in the oil industry, this is reliant on how much a barrel of oil costs. They're also getting paid so much because those jobs are extremely dangerous. Not only dangerous like in the moment, but you can have long-term health effects from mining coal and also breathing in the fumes from extracting oil from the ground. I'm gonna leave a post link down below of a great comparison that I read about. It's like mailmen getting upset over email. Perhaps when email first came out, post office workers were really upset about email. They're like, oh no, we're gonna be put out of jobs. But guess who still has jobs? Mailmen. I see my mailman every day. We still get physical mail. Oil and coal jobs will be around, at least in our lifetime, but they are shrinking. Another argument I hear all the time is that wind turbines are ugly and noisy. And I'm like, have you ever heard an oil rig, an oil extraction site? They are also ugly and noisy. Plus, I don't know about you, I love wind turbines. Ever since I was a kid, I loved seeing them when we would drive across the country. I think they're so cool. Maybe that's just me. But have you ever driven across West Texas? Oil everywhere. It's so ugly. And also the noise thing, I have never understood that. I've never heard a wind turbine before. If a wind turbine was in the residential area, you probably would be able to hear it, but most of the time they're out in the countryside. They're out in the fields of Kansas. There are rules in place so that they can be placed no closer than 300 meters or one quarter of a mile 
two resonances. But from that distance, a wind turbine would produce sound at about 43 decibels. To put that in perspective, an air conditioner is about 50 decibels and a refrigerator is about 40 decibels. So if you run your air conditioning, that's louder than a wind turbine. It would be a constant hum, sure, but it would be no more than the noises we're used to hearing. I have a road right behind my house. I hear cars all day long. My air conditioning, my refrigerator, my computer, I hear it right now. So I don't really see this as a good argument in our world. If you live in a city, you're always hearing noise. The last one for today is that renewable are more expensive. Sure, they are more expensive up front, just like with a lot of other zero waste swaps, like switching to a water filter instead of buying plastic water bottles. But over time, they can save you so much money and also make you a lot of money. Once solar panels and wind turbines are up, guess what? Wind and sun are free. Sure, they need maintained, but so do oil rigs. So that's not a good argument either. Not to mention as they become more popular and more widely accepted, they will become cheaper. And as we divest from oil and coal, we will lose subsidies for those things and gain subsidies for wind and sun, wind and solar, meaning that those will become cheaper and cheaper as we become less reliant on oil and coal. They also last a long, long time, wind turbines and solar panels, especially solar panels. I have seen some last upwards of 10 years with little maintenance. I hope that you enjoyed this video and I hope that you learned something about green energy. To be honest, I started this video out with trying, I wanted to talk about the downsides to green energy, honestly. I wanted to try to see these arguments from that side, but I, I couldn't. I did a lot of research and I'm like, wait, these arguments are kind of bogus, honestly. If you're gonna say that wind is wind energy is ugly, if you're gonna say that it's expensive and dirty, but not say that about coal and oil, you're just kind of being a hypocrite. Also, once again, please leave your common myths about green energy down below. I'd love to make this a part two. I loved researching this. I learned a lot and I hope that you learned a lot as well. If you did and you have some people in your life that don't like green energy because of the arguments we talked about today, I really encourage you to share that video with them. And all of my sources are linked in the description. I didn't just pull those out of thin air. I did some research. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. It does help support this message. And if you're new here, don't forget to hit subscribe. I talk about all things zero waste, focusing on free, easy, and fun ways to live low waste and practical ways to be an activist. So if you're interested in that, please subscribe. I would love to have you a part of this community. And if you'd love to support me in another way, I do have a Patreon link down below. We do monthly video chats, we do giveaways, we do behind the scenes videos and so much more over there. I'd love to have you over there as well. But that is all that I have for now. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate your time. And until next time, remember that your small actions have a big impact in the long run. Bye guys. And wind turbines have the turbines. So half the amount of total renewable ener energy. Yeah. So half the amount of total energy, <laughs> though we can't, no, we can't. Ow. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I hit my toe on the tripod. That really hurt. I talk about all sorts of things focusing on zero waste. All things zero waste. I talk about all sorts of things focusing on, I talk about all sorts of things focusing on free, all things zero waste. There it is, okay. <laughs>